Okay, the next step is to go ahead and bring your well-known shapefile into R and rasterize it so that you have values of 1 in all of the well-known sites and values of 0 every place else out, um, within your study area boundary. So when you go into R, you're going to need to load three libraries. The first one is the Map Tools library, and this library will work with your shapefiles that you're going to bring in. The second one is the raster library, and that's going to rasterize everything and then write a grid out so that you'll be able to use it in QGIS again. And the rgdal library, which basically is a dependency on the raster library, and it's good just to load it separately. So whenever you're working in R, you need to navigate to the folder where all of your data is located. And this is called your working directory. So we're going to go ahead and set the working directory to where the data is located. And if you want to see what's inside of your folder, you can type dir with two parentheses, and it'll give you a list of all of the files that are inside of the folder. So the first thing we're going to do is read in the boundary of the study area, and we're working on the Ghana project, so we're just going to read in a boundary for Ghana. And if you want to take a look at the boundary, you can type plot, and then we're calling it B, and you should be able to see the outline of the shapefile to the right. So we want to turn this into a raster object. So we're going to go ahead and um, change it to raster, and we're going to use the same extent as the shapefile, and we need to give it a projection. So we're going to use the same projection as the shapefile that was brought into R, and then we need to give the cell size um, a certain resolution. In this case, we're going to use 0 0.01 degrees. And then the last step is to go ahead and rasterize it. Sometimes this will take just a minute. To and once it's done rasterizing, we'll go ahead and just take a look at it to the right. You can tell when it's done when the small caret sign appears in the lower left-hand corner in the bottom. This will just be a raster of the extent of Ghana. And R automatically will assign a value of 1 to any empty raster that you create. But we want to make sure that there are only values of 1 where the well-known locations are, and then values of zeros where the not well-known locations are. So we're going to go ahead and take this raster, which is basically a gigantic matrix, and multiply it by zero so that all of the values within this, or within this raster will now be zero. So the next step is to bring in the shapefile of the well-known sites. We can go ahead and take a look at this shapefile as well. And we're going to follow the same steps where we rasterize these shapefiles. We don't have to give all of the parameters that we did before because we're going to base the parameters on the raster object that we created from the Ghana boundary. And in this case, we want all of these values to be ones because they are um, the well-known sites. 
So we'll go ahead and plot the new raster object. And you can see they're all yellow, so they're falling within the value of 1 on the scale to the right. And these are the well-known sites. So the final step is to combine these two rasters together so that we have the well-known sites and the not well-known sites and having everything match to the extent of the Ghana boundary. We can go ahead and plot this final raster object. And you can see where the green boxes are, are the well-known sites with values of 1, and then the gray area have, has values of 0, and everything matches to the extent of the Ghana boundary. So we need to go ahead and take these rasters and bring them back into QGIS. Right now, they're just objects within R, so we want to write out basically a file, a raster file that can be used in other programs. So first we're going to write out an ASCII file just because it's not very big and it's a good um, generic file to work with and it's good to have on hand. But we're also going to write out a TIP file because this file will work best for the next step that Town's going to do in QGIS. And so now if we go back to our directory and look and see what's inside of um, our directory folder, then we'll be able to see that here's the raster that we wrote with the TIFF extension, and then here is the raster with the ASCII extension. So once you're com you've done these steps, then you can go ahead and leave R, and then you'll have your data ready to bring back into QGIS.